So first things first, how are you? I am Fine. good. <laughs> <laughs> I am good, man. I'm just sitting today. Like I, I for, for the past two days, I've been doing photo shoots <laughs> for just for the sake of photo shoots for uh, future magazines that want to like do a cover story and stuff. So I just have my setup on the balcony <laughs> and do it on my own. So now I need to head it a lot. So I'm probably going to spend the whole night or half of the night editing. Well, but it's, it's interesting because um, this is a good place to start because the band has been very successful. It's been very popular. Uh, videos went viral. What do you make of this? That all of a sudden now you are somewhat in the spotlight. And maybe the first track of the new album is kind of alluding to that as well, but I'm not sure. <laughs> we have a lot of interviews, first of all, <laughs> due to that. But, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm First responses to, to the new singles are pretty awesome and that's great that people are waiting for the new album and anticipating and yeah it's kind of a, to hear the good feedback um gives us hope mm. <laughs> that it's gonna be great motivation yeah. it's a sort of first reward when mm. when we start getting this uh, reviews uh, you know, and first reactions and, uh, and, and see and release first singles. Uh, well, it's all kind of reward. You know, it's very early even to talk about some kind of royalties and sales. And it's, it, it all will be really, really later. What is important now is that how fans perceive new stuff, how uh, reviewers perceive new stuff, media, so, and uh, it's, of course, very, like I said, very pleasant to know that, you know, everything is going very well and the exception, it is, the way people accept the new album is, is very, very good. So let's jump to the beginning of uh, when the new album sort of uh, came into being, because after uh, releasing Macro, did you expect to release another album this soon, in a way? <laughs> not at all, not at all. And we would not release it uh, that soon, but for the pandemics. Okay. Uh, the only reason it came so early is that we had no shows, no tours, nothing. And if, if there is no way to play live, what else a musician can do? Write music. This is what we did over the last 18 months. And here we are, both hours coming. Hmm. Was it because I've talked with a lot of musicians about this, uh, music and touring becomes very much part of your identity and then all of a sudden that stops. Was it difficult to adjust to kind of normal life? Yeah, a lot. A lot dif difficult for me. Of course, first first time it was uh, even, you know, cool to stay <laughs> in the same place for a couple of months, uh, especially for us because we, we had spent seven years before that touring nonstop and the, finally everything stopped and for during the first couple of months it was really cool but by the summer of 2020 it started you know playing on my nerves honestly so and uh, over a couple of months before i came to kiev uh, from california and uh, i think before winter uh, 2020 Oh, no, it, it, we played a few shows in, in September and it gave me and the whole band a bit of relief. But anyways, it was a bit depressive, you know, just just because you already mentioned this, uh, being a touring musician, you know, really changes you a lot. Touring becomes a part of the identity. But like you said, you were touring very uh, heavily for, for seven years, very busy times. Um... On the other side, was it good to have sort of a mental break in, in a way so you could kind of take a perspective and look, okay, this is what we've done for the last couple of years? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mental break and turn into a mental breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it was good. Like for me personally, yeah, that was good until I started to feel overwhelmed with my thoughts you know mm. because i have so much time just 
sitting in my apartment doing nothing and uh, like missing my beloved ones. So, uh, but we should appreciate those times because uh, a good artist can make uh, candy out of a shit. Mm. But you know you what I mean? Like, yeah, of course. Yeah, like making. Uh, I love the expression when life gives you lemons, mm. um, make a lemonade. That's that's the thing. You, you just that's deal cool. with what what's in front of you in a way. Yeah, and you turn even the worst situation into something something good for you. It's the art of jujitsu, actually. Hey. <laughs> uh, Do you practice jujitsu? Yeah, I, I do BJJ, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Okay. okay. And just gra- grappling in general. Okay, cool. Well, um, and but, but that's an interesting point. But very quickly, uh, something that Tatiana said, um, and maybe this is a very general question, but did you get into music? And then for you as well, Eugene, but did you get into music as a way to escape in a way from your thoughts or to, from, from normal life in a way? You mean originally? Yeah, the, just just Back why you day? started getting interested in music and playing in a band, and I I think I even yeah I do believe that it was partially for the reason you mentioned, and in its maybe most part, but mm-hmm. we all did it. I think we all did it subconsciously. We didn't really want to run away, you know, thinking about that conscious consciously. Yeah, uh, no, no, it was different. In a different way, we all wanted the uh, to escape. We all wanted, you know, to find the way out, but we we didn't even realize that, and we were looking for solutions subconsciously, and this is why we 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 became musicians. Mm. And talking about turning a bad situation into something good, when did the ideas uh, kind of start within the band? Well, let's just write a new album then. It started instantly. Okay. The, the, I think. I think as soon as soon as the guys, uh, Roman and Vlad, got back to Kiev, they just didn't have anything else to do. And Vlad was, you know, really uh, <laughs> bursting with uh, new ideas, new songs. And this is how it all started. So they were just writing music here because they didn't have anything else, and they just didn't have any other chance because everything was locked down. And they they could only communicate with each other. So this is how it started. Mm. Was it within the first couple of kind of ideas that you noticed that everything was going to go a little bit uh, faster, a little bit more aggressive? Uh, uh, Me personally, I didn't see that until the very last point of of the album. Actually, to me, uh, before we... Mm-hmm. were ready with the concept of sound to me everything seemed quite soft <laughs> even okay. light yeah uh, in some parts yeah not everything but some parts but because we changed the sound a lot uh even soft melodies soft parts of songs became quite heavy <laughs> and it's it's just the way it is yeah so it's it's a beautiful example of how uh, uh the the sound of of instruments may change the music. So it's not only about picking right notes, it's also about performing these notes in the right way and making them them sound like that. How much a part, when does this happen? Is that once you're in the studio or do you think about this? Because this is, I think the first time you really had a chance and time to demo everything and and prepare well for for the recording. So when does that process happen? I think we little by little. Uh, just had a call. Um, uh, collecting demos, you know, uh, making them ready. We, we were little by little, you know, understanding, starting to understand how this album should sound. Uh, and it all came from the fact that we we were recording roughly, just, you know, plug in the guitar, bass. Put the mics over the over the over the drums, and we recorded this uh, for the demos. And we really loved how the demos sound. And this is where it all, it all began. We we, mm-hmm. we simply took these demos to the studio to Max, our sound producer, and, and told him, 
here you go, Max. We love how it sounds. Make it even better. And he he made it ten times better. <laughs> and you mentioned how the sound develops through throughout time. And for you, then, Tatiana, when you're uh, writing the lyrics, uh, are you influenced a lot about this uh, by the sounds of the of certain songs, or do you write before uh, songs come out? Or <laughs> no, I I think that there there could be times. And I think those times will eventually come that I'm going to write lyrics after the album going to be released. <laughs> because <laughs> that's I'm trying to explain you and to, like, um, to picture you the situation that I'm always in. <laughs> I am a procrastinator mm. and I never wrote any songs before beforehand you know like i don't really uh, write lyrics in my free time mm. yeah so i only do it when i have to so uh, and but yeah i i am really inspired by the demos that i listen to and i listen to them like for more than 10 times in a row to kind of like figure out the vibes that it brings the music brings and yeah the whole atmosphere and i need to just like uh, make a plan for myself what this song is gonna be about and stuff so yep but uh <laughs> no but yeah yeah, that's it. <laughs> but, so, so, do you like kind of that that pressure, the, knowing that well, tomorrow I have to get have this finished? Uh, <laughs> damn, I have flash. I'm having flashbacks right now. <laughs> no, I don't. I really don't. Okay. I really like. Uh, I always ask myself, why am I like this? You know, but but obviously, I cannot work in any other way. You know. Mm. The pressure is my friend, <laughs> right? And uh, yeah, even it, though it, even though you hate it, you hate <laughs> it, but it's your friend. Yeah, it's my frenemy, frenemy. <laughs> yeah, and um, but I cannot work other way. Like it was in the uh, in the institute when I was a student. Okay. Damn it! I just don't. I I you know I play and then I work. <laughs> <laughs> When, when like deadlines hit me hard deadlines are my friends too <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. so especially and then ug for you as well especially this time around when you did have a lot of time was it kind of difficult to narrow down every, all the ideas that you had or was it just very did it go very naturally it went very very naturally i i i honestly cannot remember another album uh, which which came <laughs> uh, more naturally than mm. this one, so it was very smooth. Like we didn't even have quarrels. I think we will have more quarrels now when the album is done. <laughs> <laughs> when we were when we were in the process of writing, we were so much busy with this that <laughs> we didn't have time to argue with each other. <laughs> yeah, uh, so it's absolutely enjoyable, one hundred percent enjoyable process. And in terms of where the sound kind of gravitated towards, um, was that a reflection also of, because like you mentioned, it was difficult being locked down as a musician. And is that kind of where the, where the more heavier, more maybe live orientated sound comes from? Uh, you see, uh, we have always been a, a life oriented band. Mm -hmm. We just do not know the other way. Uh, and it's it's a mystery for me. I I can hardly understand musicians who write their music in a certain way that they cannot perform this live, mm. and and they simplify it or change it in the way to perform it on stage differently, uh, or when it's just impossible to implement what you created in the studio on on stage live. I do not understand this approach. I'm not saying it is bad, but definitely not for me. <laughs> So, and we do it, we know it. We do it the way we know it. And yeah, so we we need to play it, first mm. of all. We need to play it, first of all. And with this album, it because we had tons of time to play and play and play and play and change, 
maybe again because of the frustration of the outer world around us because we were deprived of you know our life because we must admit this musicians were deprived of their lifestyle mm. i understand that well the the world is in crisis i understand that uh people suffer people die and the, the, there are front liners like you know sure. uh doctors and it is much more serious for them but it is also a matter of fact and it is worth speaking that there are people especially people of art who are deprived of their common lifestyle who are deprived of their you know uh of the way to express themselves mm. by playing music live, let's say. But at the same time, without these people, without artists in, the, in general, imagine how boring our, our life would be, especially during lockdown. So I'm, uh, I'm not saying that we are artists, the, the most important now. No, we're definitely not, but please do not forget about us. It's like my message to the whole world. Yeah, and it's of course uh, reflected in, in our music. Of course, it kind of, you know, uh, made us angry a little bit. Mm. Angry with the situation, first of all. And it expressed, we expressed this through the music. Of course it happened like that. Yeah, and no, no, I certainly agree. I think uh, enjoyment of art and then not just music, but art in general, I think, I think is very important for people. And you've noticed that, that we've been deprived of it now for quite a long time and you notice that people are hunger, uh, hungry for it. Um, I've, I've just talked about the lyrics. Uh, Eugene, is there one uh, song or maybe just a bit of lyric that uh, Tatiana introduced to the band that you were really, uh, uh, that you thought was really special or that you, that you really connected with? A very good question. Uh, every single piece. Okay. <laughs> every time, every time I... we, we, we... We recorded vocals. We recorded vocals every second day. So just a day off, then go into the studio. This is our normal schedule. And every time I, I came to the studio, Tatiana first first thing she does, she gives me the the lyrics, sends to me on on, on a messenger, or just sometimes just a screenshot, sometimes just the paper. Uh, and uh, <laughs> with this album, every single time I read through the lyrics, I was almost about to start crying. Okay. Because everything is extremely touchy, uh, closely related to me, myself, yeah, and uh, very well written. It's like very often, in it's okay, most of it, like everything of it, is high flown poetry. Mm -hmm. She writes real poetry, not just words, you know, structured in, in, in uh, by rhythm, yeah, so. Uh, it's. Uh, I think that she again managed to get to the next level in terms of the lyrics. And for you, then, Tatiana, was that a very? As you mentioned, you you always work towards deadlines and you procrastinate. So, so how do you see your own development uh, as a as a lyricist or as a songwriter? Yeah, I noticed some progress when I am like um like a red in a spinning wheel. <laughs> I can even not even listen, like, you know, I listen to, to the next track I'm going to um, record vocals to at, at home. And then like maybe a few times, two or three times, and then I stop listening to it and I start writing just, um, there's a, there's a certain uh, technique in poetry called a stream, a stream of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So you write down anything that's in your head. So I wrote uh, like without any rhymes or rhythm at all, like wrote my thoughts and blah, blah, blah. And in the end, like next day, next day when I record uh, this song, it just somehow it turns out to be great. <laughs> it's some kind of magic, magic helps me to kind of figure out so it feels like the music and the song they just come there they met uh, they meet in my room where i record shake their hands and say well okay good job play nice to meet you nice to meet you too 
we kind of like we can get, we'll make a good couple you know <laughs> and that's it so I, I don't know they work for themselves you know uh, like I mean lyrics and the melody I can really when I struggle when I'm at home I struggle sometimes uh, putting words to the music mm. but when I'm uh, in the studio it somehow works out by, uh, by itself itself it, yeah it's with the help of, of people of course in there sure <laughs> but it, is it a very um like for instance with, with an, in terms of the melodies and and how you use your vocals do you know beforehand or is that also testing out in the studio see oh, if, if i go a little bit softer here i can go harder there and it makes more uh, better dynamic or something is mm -hmm. with this album with the wallflowers i did like 90 percent of improvisation Mm. I only was uh, half sure about um, Disclosure. The song Disclosure was kind of like a, a, already um, had some Structure. outlines in my, in, in my head, yeah. And something else, <laughs> I don't <laughs> remember. So for me, it was very stressful because I was unprepared almost every time. <laughs> And I really was afraid by the way uh, of the of the anger of my bandmates you know because i was like i felt like i'm going to the exam and the teacher's gonna like kick my ass you know for me like for but i'm so stupid you know? <laughs> no not again and yeah but i i always forget you, that you it's, see, it has to be Right? I, I mean, I'm, I'm really to sorry be... to interrupt you, but you see every time. <laughs> yeah, Eugene, go every, on. Every time, at, at, I'm really sorry. Yeah, I, I'll just I'll no, go ahead. take the floor. Every time at, at you know, universities, there is one student uh, in each year of study uh, who doesn't do anything, just, you know, skips all the, all the classes. Then when it comes to exams, he just shows up and does everything very well. This this student is Tatiana. <laughs> If we compare recording sessions with exams, that's her. Uh, when she no, goes no. to the booth and starts saying, no one in this whole world will be able to say that she is unprepared because she nails it down most of the cases. Sometimes, of course, she has problems. Sometimes it happens, but most So uh, I, I want to. Oh, sorry. I, I want to get into uh, one kind of overall uh, concept then, because I, I read somewhere, Tatiana, that you said these lyrics weren't necessarily influenced by by the lockdown and by by Corona, looking outwards to the world, but you were more looking inwards. It was more personal. Um, yeah. What made you decide to write more about your own thoughts and emotions? Um, sorry, guys. I'm just doing here like two. <laughs> two businesses in and at the same time just setting up for my next interview sorry um oh what makes me what made me write uh, lyrics in this direction well first of all my my jar was like my cup is running over <laughs> as as bob marley saying my cup was running over Yeah, and I really needed to spit it out, you know, to, yeah, to, to release it, what was going on in my head. And also I think, well, it's a, it's a very usual thing when musician, it, and it's, it has to be like this. When a singer sings about anything that he feels, right, or he or she, so... I didn't want to be a, a hypocrite mm. and singing is something that uh, singing about something that I have no idea the, like about, you know what I mean? Like I know some singers sing about love, but they never have never experienced the, this kind of love that they sing about. And I really um, disp despise this. 
tell me that that name for like for the disrespect <laughs> yeah, no, no, despise is yeah. good yeah despise that is this where a song that, like copycat comes from then every every single so, uh, every single uh, song except of uh, for um, colossus um because no, Eugene no, the, question, the question the question is whether copycat uh, relates to the topic that mm. you cannot explain about things which you you have never experienced yeah the, I, i wrote the, a line down from that song uh, when you kill authenticity the art is vandalized mm -hmm. so this is what you kind of mentioned just now right kind of if you if you, you have to be authentic in in kind of what you offer to the world yes i mean authentic it's not that i mean okay Let, let me you say, can share, let, you I, can I, share the feelings you can share the feelings of another singer you know and but you can copy the music and the the image itself you know and then then the original singer or the band just disappears under all those copycats that are sitting on 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 the, his shoulders you know and it's a very tr uh, tricky mm. uh, topic I, I am I understand what you mean by the question and what Tatiana wants to say. Let me just clarify. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tatiana was speaking about a different thing uh, before you mentioned copycat. Copycat is mostly about the authenticity in the art itself, not not the message you, you, okay. you put in the art. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually a matter of fact that nowadays in all types of, types of art, uh, it all just goes to the point when we will have just millions of uh, uh, copycats, just copies, 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 because everyone, every single artist uh, in this scene and just in the world, uh, they, they do not want to take risks and they would rather go mainstream and, you know, follow the, this easy path rather than take risks and try to, you know, just uh, create their own style, which might be different from the mainstream. Mm -hmm. Actually, it takes time, yeah, just to, uh, you know, for people to understand what you mean by this and that. Yeah, uh, it, it's mostly about this aspect. And what Tatiana is saying is that uh, we, from her point of view and mine too, uh, you, you cannot really mention or not mention, just speak about topics, things, and give advice maybe to people mm -hmm. if you never experienced it yourself. So if you, if you are talking about let's say, tragic love and losing someone you, you, you really love. So you, it, it, I, I believe that it, it must come from the personal experience in some way. Right. Guys, I'm really sorry, but I need to go because it, no, no, it's been like four minutes for another interview oh, already. So, I'm very sorry. Yes, uh, Tatiana, thank yeah. you so much for uh, thank taking you the time too. And, and good luck with yeah. all the interviews. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye. So Eugene, uh, okay. uh, what, uh, can I ask you one more question? Oh, yeah, yeah, one more question yeah, before okay. we, we, we stop. And it, it's very quick, but uh, kind of touch on uh, what you mentioned just now and then being authentic and, and the uh, kind of the way music is going that everything starts to sound the same. Um, how, how important, but also how difficult is it to, to keep doing your own thing and not be influenced by what other people want from you? I think it just depends. It depends. Unfortunately, uh, I do not want to sound arrogant, but uh, it, it takes real talent to, to create something of your own. It's very easy to copy, especially in the, in the days of modern technology when you, you don't really need to be a very skillful musician to play riffs, to play on the guitar, uh, play the guitar, the bass, the drums. So it, it can be easily cut and edited. So, and it, 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 with the, all these tools, it's very easy, easy to copy. You just analyze what the others do and you just follow the same steps. Yeah, especially in the, in the world of, you know, quite simple uh, in terms of tonality, quite simple, mm -hmm. modern heavy music, because, well, it's almost about playing, you know, open strings uh, and doing this gentle stuff. Yeah, uh, it's, it doesn't require much of you. Uh, I'm, I'm saying this straight away. 
uh, I understand that some some people may may get upset, but it doesn't require much of you to play this this type of music. So in the especially understanding the the reality of that, it's very very hard to 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 make to make something really of your own to to make something which 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 stands out or just differs from the from, from the others. Uh, but the problem is also that many musicians being talented being you know really gifted and um, it, being able to make something authentic they just do not do this because it's much easier to follow the easy path much easier well luckily there are still bands like uh, you guys that that will go down the the more difficult route in a way it's not it's not only about us there are, no, no, there sure. are quite a lot of, of bands like that who does that but at the same time there is there are even more bands who do not even try to. Yeah, fair enough. Well, I wish you all the best uh, with Wallflowers. I hope everything goes well and uh, wish you the best with the release as well. And uh, thank you so much, Eugene, for taking the time to sit down and talk with me. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you very much for good questions. And well, thank you very much for uh, uh, giving us a bit of your time. <laughs>